I'm going to try and this afternoon talk about three things. I'm going to give you a, a bit of an introduction about Invista, just in case you guys don't know what Invista does. Uh, then I'm going to talk about why Invista is particularly interested in industrial biotechnology. And then I will try and go in a little bit more detail about how we've tried to approach that uh, opportunities in industrial biotechnology and how we've been working collaboratively with companies like CPI to do that. Um, so, so, uh, so, so what is Invista? So Invista is one of the world's largest uh, integrated polymer and fibres manufacturers. Uh, it's got a long history in, in, in the UK and North America. It's a combination of essentially DuPont and ICI's fibre businesses alongside Herxelenes' uh, polyester businesses. Um, you can see at the bottom we've got a, a variety of brand names that you probably have uh, seen in shops and on garments. Um, and uh, you know, we're quite large. Uh, we've got about 10,000 people in about 20 countries, so we're slightly bigger than some of the companies that uh, are on the stage today, but you know, we're slightly older than those companies as well, to, to be fair. Um, the other thing that's sort of mentioned on there is that we've uh, got a strong innovation uh, heritage. We've got over 700 unique patents, and uh, we've got significant intellectual property, not just in patents, but in the way we do things. So that's us, and we're big. Uh, our shareholders are bigger than us. Um, that's Coke Industries. Uh, that's the world's, I think, one of the world's largest private companies. It buys the number one between itself and Cargill. Uh, we're about $115 billion sized. Um, and you can see that Coke operates in 60 countries, have over 100,000 employees, and cover all the areas there, which you know, for a uh, you know, typical business model in the in this century would say that's pretty diverse. Um, but you can see we're in the polymers and fibers bit. Uh, as part of the work I'm going to talk about today, uh, we, we do a lot of collaborative work inside Coke with a few of those companies, particularly the ones in the, uh, in the uh, uh, I would call it energy side, which is basically a, a oil refining company that's part of Coke Industries, which is also uh, a large bioethanol, a large biodiesel manufacturer. Uh, we're interested in the uh, uh, the uh, process and pollution control business. That's where uh, equipment manufacturers like Coke Membranes, Coke Glitch, they, they sit in that area. Uh, and we're also in the paper and pulp industries, the forest and consumer goods. So uh, Georgia Pacific is part of Coke industry. So we, uh, we know a little bit about cellulosic uh, raw materials as well. So Invista, uh, it's really four bits, right? And you know, uh, we're in the intermediate bit. So we make uh, we make all the raw materials, we make the the, the chemicals and the polymers, uh, and we we'll go on to a little bit more detail about what we do. The other parts are quite interesting. So we've got two sort of customer-facing bits. We have an apparel business, which where Lycra sits, and we have a uh, performance service and materials business, which is things like stain master carpet. Uh, airbags, we're the world's largest airbag fiber manufacturer in the world. Um, and on the right is uh, an interesting aside is that uh, as well as a manufacturing company, a science company, we're also a licensing company. So we license technology as well. So, uh, so we interact and, uh, and, and meet the needs of different types of customers throughout that value chain. Intermediates, as we said, is, is really the sort of, uh, you know, internally we, we, we provide, uh, you know, the, comp, uh, the chemicals and polymers which goes into our fibre businesses. But we also have a, a few other things that we do. Uh, we, we actually have own, our own specialty chemical business. So, so we derive value from um, not just the, the bulk monomers, but also specialty amines and dinitriles. Uh, and those are some of our trademarks, probably not as well known as Lycra, but... You know, in, in certain businesses, those are, those are well known as well. So, uh, so that was really uh, a brief overview of Invista, yeah. Uh, what I'd like to do now is talk about um, industrial biotechnology and, and start with really uh, why, why Invista's interested in that area. Um, so, so, in essence, you know, what are we here to, here to do, guys? We're, we're here to create real value for society. That's, that's what we are. In, in doing so, in creating that value, we hope to share some of that value or retain some of that value inside, 
outside our company. Um, and, and we would see basically these, uh, these six areas as being particularly relevant to industrial biotechnology in terms of business generation. Um, the, the first two really talk about efficiency, right? They talk about using, using less energy, using lower quality energy to drive our processes. Uh, and as a result of uh, higher yields, higher selectivities, requiring simpler plants, simpler plants which cost less money to build. Uh, the next two talk really about more disruptive aspects of biotechnology. So, so these allow us, or we believe, in Vista believe that uh, uh, biotechnology has the potential to allow us to use a different type of feedstock a lower cost type of carbon feedstock and actually do chemistry that we can't really do today. Different types of chemistry from a biochemistry as rather than a pure chemistry perspective. So that allows us to get to products that could be cheaper than we are today and uh, products that don't actually exist in the market today but we would like to make. Um, the last two really talk about uh, the environmental aspects of our process uh, and, and there are environmental benefits. Uh, the last one basically states our position is that you know we don't believe uh, ultimately the consumer will pay for us to be green. You know we, we're going to need to be good at the top through the top four or five elements on this chart. Uh, for a period of time we might get a premium for being for being green, for being for being bio-based or bio-derived, but but that premium won't last, and the consumer won't give us that money forever. I think, uh, I think Graham showed a, a very complicated chart with lots of boxes on. Uh, in corporate speak, we don't like that many boxes, so I've actually got slightly more than four, but I have got four sets of boxes, okay, to, uh, to, fit, it, to fit his model. Um, so, so, so this is really what we would call a knowledge chain, Start, starting from the left. Uh, in terms of, of the raw materials we use. Uh, then some kind of primary transformation step, whether that's uh, what we call biochemistry that exists today or, or new types of biochemistry that, that haven't been thought about today. Uh, then a bioprocessing step, taking that chemistry and putting it into a process where we can make you know, large-scale quantities of those products. Uh, and then something that we call final production. This is where, you know, Investors are quite good at. We're quite good at branding. We're quite good at making markets. We're quite good at interacting with consumers and making opportunities. Um, so, so we believe that this knowledge change is quite interesting to us because uh, we, we believe some of our current capabilities can be applied, but we also um, also uh, realise that some of those capabilities we don't have. You know, Investors just don't have some of those capabilities. Certainly, we didn't have those capabilities at all when we started this journey four years ago. Um, so, so like any chain, a uh, chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So to be successful in this business, you need to be good at all those things. Um, unfortunately, uh, all those things are quite different, quite diverse, unlikely to be found in a single company today. So uh, you know, our approach, and, you, and you'll see it later, is really to assemble that train and act as the integrator. So we don't expect ourselves to be necessarily the, have all that capability internal. We, we believe that that capability might exist in the world, but it, it needs assembling. It needs putting together to make that, uh, that, that journey from left to right on that chart. So however we approach putting that chain together, um, the first thing really was so what, what problem were we trying to solve? So, uh, so that's really trying to, what we say, make a comprehensive view of the opportunity. Uh, and in doing so, we realized quite early on we didn't know anything. So, so in order to get, actually understand what was available, we had to actually do, actually, actually go ahead and develop some internal capability in Invista. So, uh, we did that two ways. Uh, we, we started a, uh, a biotechnology lab in the UK at Wilton and, and started uh, selective recruitment of you know, very experienced, very capable bioscientists. Uh, but we also realised, again, we couldn't be successful 
and cover all the potential technologies we needed to be ourselves. So we started an uh, expansive uh, search for world-class centres of excellence around the world where we could get that knowledge. Um, we put those two together and we, and we formulated a, quite a long list of potential opportunities. You know, I won't, can't remember quite many, but it was tens, hundreds of potential opportunities that we thought we could be involved with. So having got a long list, what you do is you tend to converge that. So that was our next process. So we went through a convergence process and took that, that long list down to a more manageable size. Uh, and then we stood back and decided how best to execute each of those opportunities. So we, we didn't do all those things ourselves internally. We did some of those internally and we did some of those with partners. And, and we made deliberate choices in, in doing so uh, which ones to do. So this is a really, really busy chart, and you know I'm, uh, I'm, I'm conscious you're not going to be able to read all that, but I think this is an illustration that uh, to be successful in biotechnology, industrial biotechnology, you need to be good at all that. And this is just the science side of things, and that, that's probably quite difficult to do if you start from a zero base. So, uh, so what we've tried to do is through our collaboration partners uh, and our relationships is, is fill in that gap. Some of those things we consider so important that we will develop that capability and we have sought out to develop that capability internally. Some things, some things we found that there were better people outside to do that work with us. Uh, and, and we were quite happy to find those. Um, so, so you can see that they, they, they can sort of all go across from, from proof of concept all the way through to commercialization. Some of them get, uh, some of them get lost along the way, but they're all important. So again, you have to be good at all those things, and you have to be good at doing them all the time to be successful. So, uh, so I think this is my last chart. So, uh, so, so, so this is really a list of some of the companies. So that's our web page, and you can you go to that web page afterwards. So. So we're, we're a private company, so we don't really like talking an awful lot about who we work with. Uh, but, but those are the ones we've actually physically, uh, publicly announced in terms of our website. Uh, and of course, CPI is, is at the top of our list. Uh, there's also another company based in the UK called Ingenza, based in Edinburgh. The rest of the companies are you know, quite interesting. Uh, uh, a New Zealand cum American company, a American company, a Portuguese company, and an Austrian company. On that list. Um, so again, I think it, it shows that you know we don't we don't uh, don't have to use the local one. We we, we sort of sort out the, the best. Yeah, uh, and, that, and that leads me on really to talk a little bit about CPI before I finish. Uh, so again, I think uh, I think Graham mentioned you know we've worked very closely with CPI since we started this uh, adventure in biotechnology about uh, four years ago. Um, uh, CPI have been very helpful as we've, as we've grown uh, to where we are today um, and I think you saw in the posts upstairs uh, at the end of last year uh, we, we announced a collaboration between CPI and Invista on gas fermentation process technology uh, and you know we believe that's a key element to enable the success of this technology going forward uh, and we're delighted to uh, to have CPI as a partner in doing that. Uh, I think both partners, both CPI and ourselves, realise that we both have to learn and we both have to develop our skills and capabilities to be successful, uh, but I'm confident that, uh, that we will be successful. So at that point I'd, I'd leave it now.